So for this first Webmaster podcast on Webmaster topics and SEO, if such a thing still exists or is valid, uh, this particular podcast is about uh, cloud services and the use of the cloud and the future of the cloud. So to start with, I would like to talk about cloud services such as Google Drive and Dropbox. And there are many other uh, solutions on offer on the World Wide Web in the moment. This is now uh, 2014 in February, so right now a lot of people are using iPads or tablets to are uh, using Dropbox and G Drive and Google Drive and SkyDrive and a lot of online cloud services. Uh, which are, they make affiliations with app makers, so you have a different app, like the app I'm using right now, in fact, which is uh, Voice Recorder Pro on an iPhone 5S. It uh, makes great HD recordings, and it has various export options to open in another app or to send to soundcloud.com or to Facebook. It's great if you just want to send uh, sound talks or uh, music or stuff to Facebook. It's very good uh, because it saves your recording as an MP4 instead of an MP3 and lets Facebook think it's a video because as you may already know it is not possible to upload an MP3 to Facebook because I don't have an MP3 player built in or they don't want us to. I suppose they can't check sound, but they can check video, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're digressing and we're talking about the cloud. So Facebook is another cloud service, in fact. I use Apple products, so um, in my photo editor, iPhoto and Aperture, which I have on my Mac, and on my iPad and iPhone, uh, you can make slideshows or edit photos. And you can also view your stream. And you can add your Flickr stream or your Facebook stream. And it will fetch all of your albums and photos from Facebook and let you view them uh, on your PC within iPhoto, or your photo editor viewer. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, a lot of apps... It's very difficult to get it from the app onto your PC or your MacBook or your Windows laptop. Uh, and it's so fiddly. And uh, up until now, uh, the with Apple at least, uh, iOS and the OS X of the, the desktop and laptop versions of the operating system and the mobile versions, uh, they're still missing stuff. For example, an iPhone can airdrop a file to an iPad, so I can make an iMovie or a slideshow or some photos or videos or even this recording and I can airdrop it straight to my iPad. Airdrop is a wireless, something like Bluetooth, but it's faster. Uh, wireless file transfer and the uh, Mac desktop and the uh, uh, MacBook laptops and MacBook Air they have it too and they can do it to each other but they can't do it to a mobile and a mobile can't do it to the desktop and so this is a problem and you couldn't do it from an iPhone to an iPad up until a couple of months ago no, you can, since the iOS 7 update, they brought in AirDrop and AirPlay. So you can play to your TV through Apple TV wirelessly from your iPad. I can open YouTube and just beam it straight to my TV. Android has the same thing. It's a different solution. Chromebook has it too, and there's a Chromecast. It's like a USB. You plug it in, and you can cast your files to a screen wirelessly or transfer files. Uh, before this came, you couldn't. And so everybody was using Dropbox, and most people still are using Dropbox, except for a few people who are at the forefront. I have all the latest 
uh, hardware and I push my hardware and the, my software to the limits in how I work um, in many many areas, be it video, graphics, writing, uh, programming, web mastering, doing SEO, uh, optimization, uh, lots of stuff, making videos, making music. Uh, I try to make all my own content and be multifaceted, so I get my fingers deeply into all areas of working with uh, the operating system and with the software and using them to their fullest extent. extent. So uh, I think that right now, even though I am not using Dropbox or G Drive, which I was, I've found it also the indirect manner, very fiddly and cumbersome. And it is. Ah. And now I don't do that. I can just transfer directly in the ways I have found. But I know that most of the world uh, is not doing that yet and still using Dropbox. Uh, and even those who will be doing what I'm doing now and transferring their files in a direct and more easier way may still find cloud services useful for storing large files or files they don't always want on their computer but want access to. So it is a service which is useful and has a reason for being. Now the reason for being is the main causal factor behind anything that has appeared or is appearing or will appear on the World Wide Web. And so, a reason for being. If everybody can directly send a file from their Android or their iOS device to their PC, or they can wirelessly log in to their PC, as one can already do with services like LogMeIn, then I believe that uh, perhaps 60 to 70 percent of the reasons for being of these cloud services such as Dropbox and Google Drive will cease to exist. This will cause these domains and these services to become much lesser used but still used enough to remain in existence and survive but will not be as big and as popular and therefore not added to all apps or share buttons as they are appearing to be added right now in the moment. Because the apps themselves will build in AirPlay and AirDrop for the iOS system and uh, I think it's called Bean Shoutcast for Android and uh, other kinds of file transfer systems. And so as the compatibility between tablets, mobile devices, smartphones and uh, desktop and laptop operating systems are closing in on each other and growing together, the need for such uh, ulterior paths and methods of syncing or uh, transferring one's work files uh, will almost cease to be. And so I would say it is not good to place all of one's faith and work practices and the ways, the methods which one works to using things like Google Drive and Dropbox and rather to do what I am doing and face the future and search for apps and test them and try different methods like right now, uh, I have an e-commerce solution called Equid.com, uh, which uses a very, uh, it's very innovative script. It's a widget, and you just insert the widget in any HTML widget in any page, and it displays your store with all its categories and lots and lots of metadata. It's one of the most modern m online store displays in the world to 
in the moment. And so, but it's incredibly simple, like a widget for the user, like inserting a YouTube video, just like an embed code. You just embed it. And so I will use WordPress and embed my store in there. But to add products from the admin CP of that store, store you cannot use a tablet or a mobile device. It just won't work. You cannot see the what you see is what you get editor, the, the HTML editor, and the browser just, the keyboard gets deactivated, it doesn't work. And so, in principle, right up until today, I, I found it impossible to add a product to my store using an iPad as my browser and work tool. Uh, also, HTML editors is not really existed any usable version till now. Right now there are a couple of versions that have appeared, one called Blog Docs and the other one which is my solution which is called Blogpad Pro. So what I do now is I use Blogpad Pro which is at least as good as the uh, post editor within WordPress itself um, if you don't know what WordPress is, WordPress is a software, a blogging software. So you, it's an online website editor. You edit it online and it's like a forum posting. You have a text editor. And so this uh, Blogpad Pro on my iPad actually has all the tools uh, that I have in a PC browser when I'm editing. Uh, it won't let me use the Equid e-commerce product editor but what I can do is I can just paste a ready posted HTML with all the images inserted and their uh, link URLs etc into the product and so uh, I have found another way and changed my work method what I do is I take every product from my store which is a kind of written up like a blog post and instead of writing up a product in the store, I blog it on WordPress. After I blogged it, I then take the HTML and copy and paste it into the normally not usable uh, control panel product editor of my e-commerce solution and save. And so it's still a little bit indirect with a third party in between and having to blog it to be able to get the code and the images online so that they actually point to a real image that's already existing on the server. Uh, it's working, but uh, I'm waiting for the iPad and for the developers of Equid.com to polish and iron out the little creases. And I know that at some point the tablet is going to work directly within the Equid product editor and I will not ye need to use any ulterior methods. And so that ulterior method is kind of like cloud service, a Dropbox, but I'm using my own blog on WordPress as the Dropbox for my images and pointing to them using HTML when I, when I add it to my product editor with Equid.com. That will stop as soon as the product editor works in iPad. And Dropbox, I don't use it anymore. There's no reason for me to use it because I have a much quicker and more direct ways. And so the conclusion to this talk, which was mainly focused on the future of cloud services and which I will make a second part to, to talk about ways which we will use instead and will allow the continued use of the cloud but will show how the, the use of the cloud is going to develop and change as the internet uh, improves and gets more as technology increases. Hmm? But for sure Dropbox, Google Drive, they're not going to really survive right as they are presenting themselves for use. They will be useful in a different way. But as they are useful right now, that is going to be very short-lived. So 
that part of cloud services has no future at all. And that's the end of this talk, my very first one. I hope there are some insights and interesting points for all of you webmasters, marketers, and search engine optimizers out there. And I hope to give many more talks on webmastering, on all aspects of webmastering, and successfully making your way to working from home and getting rich online. This is Ajahn Spencer Littlewood signing off.